Hey, I'm Brad Nelson. Hey, I'm Brian Brown doing. Hey, and you're watching the Versus series on StarCityGames.com. Hey! Hey, so today we're going to be playing some standard cards in uh, preparation for the Indianapolis Open this weekend. Yep, for sure. I'm playing a deck I like to call Hay is for Horses. Hay is for Horses? That's yeah. great, except mine has green cards, so it's more hay-like. Oh, but mine has uh, a bunch of horses in it. I got Does some it? I got some horses in this race. I also feel like I have things that look more like horses. Really? Like yes, what? Like a siege rhino. <laughs> that doesn't look like a horse. I mean, someone's riding it like a horse. That's fair, I guess. I have horseling outburst. You have horseling outburst? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's, <laughs> that's a horse-rific joke. Yeah, yes it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, I am playing uh, an Obzon deck that uh, in ni initial Pro Tour testing, we have to just figure out like where the format stands. And yep. I just built a version of Obzon with uh, Knight of the White Orchid because Knight feels like a good replacement for Fleece Mane. Like, there's no reason to play Knight uh, in a two or three color deck before there was dual lands and before Fleece Mane was gone. Like, why would you not just want to cast the best two drop? Yeah, why would you play a card that just ran into Corsair and Karyatid yeah. versus a card that ran over Corsair and Karyatid? Hey, hey! I like it. Yep. Um, but now, because Rakshasha still sucks because uh, of Hangerback Walker yep. and just other reasons, and the mana doesn't really work for that card to pump a lot because you, you want... planes. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, Knight just feels like a very good card for an Obzon deck. So I'm not playing Anafenza because it's just hard to cast because of how my mana works for a Knight deck. And I'm just playing the really powerful cards that I think exist in the format, like Gideon, Gideon into Wingmate Rock. And now Dromoka, because Dromoka feels like, yes, you can kill it. It dies to all the good Doom Blades, but... It doesn't die to Elspeth, which is nice. Yes, because Elspeth <laughs> is old and retired. Yeah. And now... Well, that's she's, just, de she's apparently dead. Yeah, she is dead. Yeah. But we were still playing with her ghost for a while. Yeah. <laughs> but now Dromoka just gets to breathe this you know, breath of fresh air because there's no more else that just play this, play this and kill it. And now if you don't kill a Jeromoka, you just die. See, I, I thought just that, learned that rule. I thought that dragons breathe fire, not fresh air. No, Jeromoka breathes fresh air. Jeromoka's the nicest uh, dragon lord of all of them. Like, well, she that's takes... not saying that much. <laughs> the I rest mean, of them yeah, are. <laughs> they're just awful dragons. They're just yeah. horrible things. Yeah. Yeah, they just kill and eat all of their own, like, minions. Yep, yeah, Jermoke is really nice. But so I think that that card's really good. And there's a lot of games that I've played already that, yes, because of Night of Light Orchid, I get to Jermoke a turn faster where it feels like a Bane, an actual Baneslayer Angel. Yeah. Because it comes down on turn five. And you just kind of crush your fingers, but the game really hasn't developed to where if it dies, you're just going to lose anyway already. I mean, if it dies, it dies. It dies, it dies. But if it doesn't, the game is over. Yeah. You just win on the spot. And so I've been really happy with the card and the curve, and we'll see what happens. Um,. A lot of people have been saying that there's no more reason to play all these tap lands, but I disagree when you're playing Obzon, because one of the things that Obzon gets to do is stabilize with Siege Rhinos. I guess that's true. Yeah. But uh, it does suck that you can't scry anymore, so. Yes, you cannot scry anymore, which does suck, uh, and I always... Well, actually, you can. Yeah, you do. If you, you can mulligan. mulligan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I dislike not scrying, because like every time I put a Shambling Vent into play, I'm just like, oh, I used to be able to scry. And then the game, like, just... Everything attrition's out, and I'm like, oh, attack you with this 2-3 land, play Wingmate Rock. This is great, you know? So, like, the man lands have been very good for me, and we'll see how they are in the matchup. All right, I'm playing a red-white deck, and it is basically uh, based around the idea that Stasis Snare is one of the best removal spells in the format, uh, because it deals with Hangerback Walker, which is one of the best creatures in the format. Uh, and Silk Wrap is kind of the same thing, where it's just a way to deal with Hangerback Walker, and also kind of protects you from Dromoka's command, because you get to, like, exile their Hangerback, and then they can never Dromoka's command you again, because they just get to put a 0-0 zero, zero back into play if they yeah. decide to do that, which, uh, outside of random, like, Liliana synergies or whatever, it's probably not very good for them. I should put a Liliana in my deck just for that. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty sweet. Uh, and then other than that, I'm also utilizing Gideon, which I think is one of the best cards, along with Sark and the Dragon Speaker, which I also think is really good, where you can just curve, if you curve a Gideon into a Sarkin, um, you get to, like, play Gideon and make a 2-2, two -two, and now they're, like, tasked with trying to deal with this Gideon. They're going to probably have to attack their creatures into it. You can, like, trade with one. Then the next turn, you like play your Sark and kill the creature that's left. You're left with two planeswalkers in play. Um, so there's just a lot of synergy there. Is just a, a, 
two Planeswalkers to protect themselves at four and five mana. And then the rest of the deck's a bunch of like removal spells to try to facilitate that. And then Outpost Siege to gain an advantage there as well. Sounds exactly like my deck, except for I have four Gideons and Wingmates, because that interacts really well there. And pretty much when a new card comes out and everyone starts talking about how it synergizes with the other cards in their deck, and they're not the same cards from different from deck to deck, you're starting to realize that the card is just busted. Yeah, I mean, it's just like Gideon just synergizes well with everything because yeah. it's really good. Yeah, it's just the best Planeswalker in the format, and it's probably just the best card in Standard. Probably, like, yeah. I, I, I've been trying to not be so hyperbolic these days, but I've never felt bad about casting a Gideon. Yeah, and like worst case, it's like, I just Gideon's just going to die, but... Here's a glorious anthem that like yeah. pumps the rest of my guys or whatever. And so. that's so big, like with the wingmates I'm playing. Like if you're in a language matchup and if you get to trigger raid, you can just sacrifice the Gideon, and now they can't languish because you have two four fives. Also, I've had that come up where you know how wingmate rock just doesn't interact with an attacking rhino that well. Like yes, uh, sometimes the rhino player has a tough time with the wingmate token and the and the rock, but they still get to attack and it's a card you can't block. But now with two four fives, you're just like double block, like whatever. What are you gonna do to me? Like it doesn't matter. Yeah, if you kill one, then the other one still just bounces off. Like. Yeah, it's just totally fine. So I've been very impressed with uh, the interactions of Gideon and Wingmate Rock, and we'll see what happens in this video if these knights and these shambling vents can uh, dispatch. I don't even know what's in the deck. Something Red and white cards. cards. Let's see them. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, how would you like to randomize? Uh, high roll. Okay. <laughs> you never asked me. No! Yeah, it rolled seven. <laughs> seven. Yes, I'll play first. No. Woo! God. Thank, that was a mistake to ask. I know. Oh, uh, Speaking of mistake, this hand. Uh, I'm going to keep. <laughs> well, I'm going to keep this. It's pretty bad, but <laughs> yeah, I still think it's a keep. So I had two copies of this in my deck, and I cut it down to one of each of them because it kept screwing me too often, but we're still going to get screwed by it, so <laughs> 20 21, minutes. go. Uh-oh. All right, Shambling Vents, go. Had it. No. Had it. Secret of the way. You're up. All right. Meant oh, 20. This is, this is bad. <laughs> go. <laughs> I kept a really loose one, and I've just gotten punished. I like the sound of punishment. Um but we'll see how it plays out from here. Come on, deck. Cough it up. That's not it. Uh, two. 18. Go. Cool. <sighs> that isn't good either, but I think that I just have to make that play. All right, so I'm going to go to 17 and play a morph. Okay. And we'll go get a planes in your turn. Uh, oof. That's kind of sad, unfortunately, but... So you have a morph. Um, More importantly, is this the... There it is. Morph number one. Hmm. <coughs> There's a lot of... Uh, I have options for sure. I think we're just going to fetch play Gideon. That's a good option. Um, but he can kill it with the right cards, so it's gonna suck. But so I go to nineteen. Not if you tick up. Oh, it's true. I could tick up. Uh, that's true. I could tick up. Let's see, that actually might be correct to be honest. Just to keep, because like my hand's so good. Yeah. At this point, that I want to just untap with Gideon, and I think. Like ticking up is my best chance of doing that. So I actually, I actually, I'm gonna tick up and attack, attack you for three. three. So you go to fourteen and I go to twenty-two. Uh, yeah, fourteen to twenty-two. Go. All right. Well, I will attack at your Gideon. So three. And I'm going to play a planes and a rhino and trigger that. Yeah, that's bad. Seventeen to nineteen. Yep. Draw. Oh, we're alive? Yeah. Yep. 
that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. All right, so what do I want to do here? Kind of just want to get this out here. Might be bad, though, to just have to take a turn off to do that. So just I, I think I fall too far behind on board if I do that. Um, I wish I Had was a baller. Dollars. Yeah, I wish I was a baller. <laughs> All right, we're gonna plus Gideon. All right, bash. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't understand. What? Why the Seeker's running into the Rhino. Okay. I don't... I don't uh, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well, I thought he wasn't going to block because of Wild Slash, but he did, so... Alright, 12. Alright, kill your morph. Not kill it. Exile it. Go. Ooh, this is... Yeah, so if I had a Slash... Th I thought he wouldn't block because he... Because if I just slash his Rhino, he's really far behind. But um, he did. So, but I don't think well, that Seeker is going to do that. Mu I don't think having that other Seeker in yeah. play is going to do that much. Well, the reason I did it was because of. I mean, I know what it is. Yeah. But <laughs> Go. Are they? What are they called? Birds? Rocks? Birds? Birds. Are they turtles? Cause turtles ah, are come on! I needed that last turn. That's such a tilt. Huh? There are penguins on here. Okay. Yeah, I needed to draw that last turn. I think I'm just dead at this point. <laughs> All right. So we have found <laughs> that, the, that the, these are not in any real order anymore. They should just be under bird. Should they be under bird? Yeah. That's what I asked. Oh, there they are. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna yeah. play this on con on con scope. Oh jeez. I could do some cool things this turn, but I think just doing this trigger, I go to 15. Are you just taking 10? Mm -hmm. I'll put you at 9. I'll play another wingmate. Yeah, that's just... That's uh, just game-breaking, yeah. That's just going to... Sad, because I can actually... Well, I mean, I can actually kill two creatures this turn, but I think I'm just still too far behind. Yeah. Um... Uh, attack. I will not block. Okay. I will Valor Stance us. Actually, let's. Yeah, Valor Stance Wingmate Rock. Okay. Stasis Snare the other Wingmate Rock. Okay. And take four. I gain four. 11 to 13. Yep. I have you. Oh wait, no. I have Jeweled Swain. Okay, I'm dead then. That's just the pump that I need. Yep. I think I could survive at one, right? Yeah, yeah. you could have went to one. All right. Uh, I had a mulligan, and this hand is uh, much better than the last hand I had, but it's still a little awkward. We need to find uh, lands, but thankfully we get to scry. So, uh, I mean, this this card would be really good, but I'm gonna bottom it because it's not a land. Okay. And then you I'll still get to play a land. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm going to play this and say go. Okay. I'm going to lead on a Sandstep Citadel. And I love that before with Sandstep and Temples, you always had a decision, but now it's just always correct to just play the dual land. Yep. Your turn. All right, draw. Okay, cool. That was good. Uh, we'll just play this and gain a life, and you're up. All right. I will play Shambling Vents, and you're up. All right. So we'll untap and draw. Uh, and I'm not fetching because I'm 
always going to be fetching a basic planes with us anyway because it's just better than what else I could anything else I could get. So I am going to fetch now and play a morph in Europe. All right. So I'm back a to morph. back to twenty. Hmm. I don't know what that is. Sounds like a problem. It could be. Could be a very big problem. Uh, I will pass the turn to you. I mean, I'm probably going to think that it's a Rhino Killer. It could be an Iron Shaman. Your turn. I go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll draw. <coughs> Attack. No bucks. Take it. Yep, 18. And I will, unfortunately, didn't draw a land, so it's Hordling Outburst. Hmm. And I'm done. All right, well, I'm going to be going to 17 no matter what. Go get a plane, because we already have... Yeah, that a plane's still lets us cast Rhino if we draw it. And... Oh, yeah, the morph token on there. I don't want you to cast a Rhino. <laughs> don't know what my best play is here. Awkwardly enough, it might just be this. Yep, <laughs> that's what I thought you were. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. It just might be that play. Some, sometimes you gotta kill a. I mean, sure. I I mean, I really don't have that many ultimate price targets in this deck, so. Yeah. Uh, that make a two two. What what are you using? We didn't actually put a two two oh, in play. Let's see. Last time I was using kitties. Jeff Foster tokens. No, like there's kitten. Oh no. Oh, they're right here. Yep. Okay, okay. some kittens. So I'll just make one of these, hope that this <laughs> guinea doesn't die, but I believe it will. <laughs> I, I agree with your belief. I think it will die. Dang it. Can't uh, can't draw the land, but yeah, we're just going to get that token out of there, and that guinea will well. die. Here we go. All right. <coughs> if he dies, um. he dies. <laughs> Try it again. Okay. <laughs> Go. All right. Come on, deck. Here it is. No, you're on Gideon. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to... Hmm. Actually, is that right? Probably is. I could just... I could just do this again. But I think it's better to just Gideon and make an emblem. Okay. So here is your Gideon emblem. Okay. And then everything at Gideon. Go. And I will probably get wing mate. And wing mate. Sure, mate team. And your turn. Draw. Hmm. I think that my best play is to just w hope to draw a land next turn, so I'm just going to say go. Okay, I'll go to 16. Okay. And here, so the the idea is that I can go uh, grab a dual lamb and just have it tap, but there's still one left in my deck. So what I've been learning so far in this format is... Just grab the basic. Just grab the basic, and now all my lands are untapped. Yep. Might as well just be a green. I have so much white. I have one forest in here. Draw. <laughs> I mean, I don't want the land, but <laughs> uh, declare attackers. Okay. Trigger. Uh, with that trigger on the stack, I'm going to stasis near the bird. That is going to happen. And so I take you. I take. No. Oh. oh, you're gonna. I'm gonna gain one of seventeen. Okay. Something. Is this putting counters on or Rokas command? I'm going to plus one plus one and or 
plus one, plus one here, and I guess I should just deal damage to you first. Okay. Go to 15. And then plus one, plus one, and fight your morph. Okay. And it was a, it was a dragon, yep. Okay, so this gets a counter. So now that that can block the two twos, and I should tap for it. Probably. In your turn. All right. Come on, land. Press. It's not a land. Not a land. Uh, we'll play this on cons. Go. All right, I will draw two. I was actually hoping that it was a land, so you Sarka and try to kill the wingmate, and I just put counters on it. But I will draw two. Untap. Draw for turn. And... So black, white, colorless, animate. Okay. And declare attackers trigger. I go to. Eighteen. Eighteen. Double blocked event. Yep. Uh, kill one. You take six. Down to nine. I gain two up to twenty. Uh, second main. Play another rhino or play a rhino. Trigger six to twenty three. And your turn. And I still have one vents just so you know. Oh, wild slash a um six. Yeah, I'm dead. Yeah. The one thing I will say about this game is like we're showing the power of these, but the one thing that was really cool is because if you overload on enchantment removal and you hit tokens or or hangerbacks, like I just I can't get to that outpost siege. That's true. Where I normally yeah. always could get to an outpost siege. Mm-hmm. It was actually really, really Yeah, cool. that's why I think that, like, Outpost Siege is playable because of the other things, like... Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I have to respect BBD's enchantment removal. Like, if I... I can keep Hangerbacks in for the best-case scenarios, but odds are those are never going to happen. The card isn't even that powerful against a white, red, aggressive strategy to begin with, but it's just going to really com complicate all of my situations. So, I just have to get rid of this card. The stance doesn't hit anything. And what I'm going to be upgrading is uh, my spells. And I'm going to have Tragic Arrogance for any boards that get really far behind. This is the card that punishes all the enchantment removal. Mm -hmm. And this card is going to help me deal with the Planeswalkers and the tokens or the Outpost Sieges. It just, uh, this might be the best deck I've seen for Duress so far. Like, where I've wanted to bring it in. Uh, mostly Duress has been kind of bad, and I don't even know if I want so many copies in a deck. Like, as for Dragons, you're like, oh, I'll take your dig, and then you just play Dragons and kill me. Yeah, exactly. Um, but this card can disrupt the Planeswalkers, which will disrupt my threats. So I'm going to just be boarding these cards in, and having a threat-less deck, and hopefully just be able to overcome that. Uh, I'm cutting the Wild Slashes, which are really mediocre against this deck, and I'm bringing in Roast and Valor Stance, basically just more ways to kill big things like Rhinos. Yeah. So. All right, we're here for game three, and this hand is, like, maybe a little land-heavy, but uh, we do have a lot of, like, good cards we can draw in the meantime to help offset that, so I'm going to keep. <laughs> my, my hand, very land-heavy. <laughs> go. 21. You missed your trigger. You said go. It was a, it was implied, when, was I, it implied? when I wrote 21 on my... Was it? I wrote 21 go. on my sh on my sheet, so just... All right, that was not what we wanted to draw. Secret of the way. Go. All right. I'm going to thought seize you. Or you address me? Sorry, yeah, All right, well, would you like one of these two stasis snares or my lands? I will take, yeah, I'll take the playable card. You have three lands and a stasis snare. Yep. And I will play uh, Shambling Vents and pass the turn. Okay, draw. Uh, I guess he might play, like, Ven Protector or something. So we should probably just play with this. Attack you. Yeah, 18. Go. Hmm. Must be nice. It is. It <laughs> is. I'm. I'm very talented at magic. Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll fetch in my upkeep. So I'm at twenty. Get a mountain. So now I can fetch for duels if I want to, or not. It doesn't. I. I basically have like almost perfect mana at this point. So 
All right, another siege off the top would be a delight. That would not. I would mm. not be happy about that. Uh, two. Yep. Uh, the yeah, 21. 21. Go. Knight. I, yeah, I screwed that up. I'm dumb. I thought I could double knight this turn, so I skipped a land drop. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I thought you just didn't have lands. Nope, I have a lot. <laughs> I'm so dumb. That was so stupid. Um, yeah, we'll grab... No, we'll, yeah, we'll grab that. Cut. And play that in your turn. Okay. I'm not going to burn Stasis Nair on the Night of the White Orchid, so draw. Uh. I think at this point I will because yeah. he can wingmate, ro wingmate rock me if I don't. And yep. it also, I don't care that much if he gets a knight back. 13, if he Dromokas commands me, I'm going to go to 25. Okay. Go. Second duress was really, really backbreaking. Good, yeah. Because we definitely needed to just. Yep. Knight is so good. I'm going to go grab a planes once I find one. And then I'm going to play an additional planes and pass the turn. Okay, draw a card. Alright, we'll play the one swift teeth. Hmm. I'll play Gideon. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to make a cat. And I'm going to say go. Hmm. I'll draw two. I don't know if that's correct. I can kill the Seeker right now. But I feel like just getting more cards is going to be better. And they were some really good cards. Uh, I will attack Gideon with just that. I will double block. Okay, I will put this one first. Okay. For strike damage. All for the price. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was okay with him forced to use a spell there. Yeah. Like. And then I will play a morph in your turn. Okay. I'm going to fetch again my upkeep just to lower the odds of me drawing lands. Steve Rimmel will be so mad at you. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. I mean, there's a good chance I use that land at some point anyway, so... Oh, of course. You should probably put your phone away. Yeah. Alright. Here we go. Alright, draw. Just what the doctor didn't order. Um... Of another land. <laughs> uh, let's see. At eleven. Mm -hmm. I mean, he probably has. Uh, I don't see how this ends well for me because I'm flooding out real bad. Yeah. I don't think making a cat accomplishes anything, so we'll do this. So I can either take it and go to six and potentially be in double burn range. Uh, I mean, his deck could still play Exquisite Firecraft or something like that. Um, or I can let it stay in play. I don't even... This is tough. Nah, I'll take it. I'm at six. Okay. Go. Uh, flip this up, get a duress back. Sure. Now this, I've decided I'm not playing around burn, but I am gonna play around stasis. 
Alright. Untap draw. Okay. I will attack your Gideon. Okay, so that's gone. I'll duress you. Valor stance. Oh, I play around that too. Dragon Lord. Sure. Yep. Go. All right, let's yep. go. All right, I'm gonna keep this in. Yeah, it's weird because when I looked at this, I'm like, oh, I haven't drawn enough cards because it's kind of an underwhelming hand. Mm -hmm. But I did, so I don't. Uh, maybe I'm supposed to mulligan it, but I'm gonna keep. Um, this hand is good. Unfortunately, go. One of the issues is that I wish there, like, if there was a red white duel, it'd be make things like really nice. Your turn. Um, but I just drew another land anyway, so it works out fine. Play Seeker. Go. So the next turn I can play either of these two, depending on what the situation calls for. Hmm. Do not like my hand at all. Tell me more. Not going to. Okay. That's fine. You don't have to. All right. Uh, I drew this, but I'm still going to use this. Just there's no reason not to. Okay. What so, are you doing? Uh, I'm going to fetch and get a Cinder Glade and then cast a Hordling Outburst. That is good. And I'm going to bash you for three. That's bad. Yep. All right. So you're going to, and you're fetching as well. So you'll be at 16, I'll be at 22. All right, that's good. Your hand's good. Everything's good. Stop drawing windswept teeth. <laughs> morph, your turn. All right, a morph, he says. I'll draw. All right, so here, I think I want to do this. That way, um, Dramokas command just becomes a lot worse for him. So I'm gonna fetch and stasis near the morph. Okay. Um. So I'll be at 21, but then I'm gonna gain three back. So I'll end up at 24. I'll attack you for six. And I go to 10. Yep. Jeez. And you're up. And I'm gonna try to find that dual land in here somewhere. Oh, that draw was not good. Canopy Vista. Hmm. <coughs> I do not like my chances in this game anymore. Fast forward five turns, and I'm like, oh no, facing I'm, down two. I'm in a lot of trouble. Okay. All right, that. Dramokos. Fight, get the other one back. Okay. Go. Yeah, that was a lot <laughs> better than it could have been. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm not sure that I should even play a land this turn just to keep his, um, I don't really know what card I could draw that would punish me for, n for not playing a land. Although maybe I'm supposed to do this and this, so. Yeah, I guess I'm probably supposed to do those too. So I'll silk wrap your guy. Seven. Um, I'll play a land and a morph, and I'm done. That is not good. That is so, oh, why? Why deck? Okay. Uh, draw. Combat. Yep. Two. Go ahead. Nope. <laughs> I needed it to be tragic arrogance <laughs> to go to one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all I drew was obs on charms and more lands in my hand was a was two den protectors, a Mocha's command and four lands. And it felt very underwhelming. And then I just drew like None of the real good cards. Sure. 
I'm going to keep. Yeah, my hand's pretty bad, but you know what? I'm going to keep two. Go. Whew. Really, Duck? Go. Go off the top. Pressure. Go. Oh, no. This is Irish Shaman. So, I could have saved that guy for three. Can I block him? No. Oh. <laughs> okay, well. Um, whatever. All Go. right. <laughs> Here's an interesting question. Do I even play a land? Don't. I'm not going to. 18. Go. 18. Go. <laughs> 16. Go. The reason I didn't play a land is because I didn't want to just turn on Knight of the White Orchid. Um, I understand that. Because um, my hand just doesn't do anything, so it doesn't matter as much. That I'm just going to make a thing and say go. I want to be able to block. Or m force him to play a, sta a stasis snare. A stasis on these creatures. Uh, where do the kitties go, though? Here's one kitten. All right. uh, is well. that actually correct? Maybe if I attack you... You're still gonna have to stasis to keep up with the game, but this is dead. Yeah, I'm just I'm I was gonna attack you, so it's sixteen all, and then just play that. Okay, sure, that's fine. I will still kill the cat. Yep. Draw. Ooh, this is really gross. Uh, attack Gideon down Sweet. to two, and I'll play Outpost Siege on Cons. Here we go. We need the siege to do some serious dirty work here. Well, it's probably going to. Um, make a kitty. Or maybe not. Maybe I just want to get it above. Yeah, I'm going to attack you for seven. Okay, I'm at nine. And rhino. It's pretty good. Down, t I go to 15, and then up to 18, you go to six. Yep. And your turn. All right, flip hordling, draw. That blocks things. Uh, does it? <laughs> Gideon's too good. Yeah. Like. Yeah, basically, like, yeah, Gideon was, like, one of the only things he could play that would just put me so far behind. I actually forgot that if you got rid of my creatures and put this at two, this still triggers raid. I just forgot that the Gideon itself can yep. trigger it. Yep. Well, like, that's Gideon rocks so powerful because it does is it two ways. Yeah. yeah, it's two ways to trigger. So this is really awkward because I, if I cast. Yeah, I think I just have to play. I think I just have to play. Um, aggressively, so hurling outbursts. Yeah. And I'll pass the turn. Alright, so untap, draw. Combat. Mm-hmm. Go to uh, two. Pass. Er, yep. Yeah, go to, go two. to two. Sure. Now, I could have Obzon Charmed that, but then if he Valor stances, I'm in a lot of trouble because I can follow it up with Wing May Rock. That's pretty good. Yeah. And your turn. Uh, flip another Siege. Draw another Siege. <laughs> and I, s I have Lance. So. Yeah, and that's like the... That's always what sucks about Siege when that, that happens. Right, yeah, you just... You would get really far ahead if you weren't behind on board. Yep. Yeah. And, like, I could have played a land that turn, and then 
that might have been better for me, but like it looked like he was missing land drops, and I didn't want to yeah. enable. Yeah, I mean, I he had an extra land, and then I drew the the tap land, so I'm like, I'll play it, and then whatever you do, I can start playing Gideon's into Wingmates if I draw more lands. So did you have? I knight? did skip a land. Okay. I did skip a land drop. Yep. Okay. All right, so I smashed you. That's Let's just true. Preface with that, right? Yes. But I honestly believe it's because you're trying new decks and new cards and new strategies. And I'm just playing Obzon. And Obzon is still stupid. Yeah. And I, I've been playing Obzon for about a month now. Ever since the Pro Tour, I've just been playing Obzon decks. And once this new set came out, I wanted to start playing it, especially because of the sham what's the the shambling vents. Yep, shambling vent. And this is like a prime example of why I have no idea why in Battle for Zendikar they gave Obzon uh man land or creature land. Yeah. And they didn't give like red, white, and blue green the two creature lands for the first time. Like yeah. why why do I get a, a creature land in my deck? Like, like, well, why, why do you give a land to the, the deck that already has everything? Yeah. It it's makes like, no what, sense what, to what me. What gift do you give to the person who, ha- like, you know, who has everything? Knight was disgusting so. in this deck, right? It felt yeah. really good. Yeah. I like Whenever you were slow, I was able to then match that and overpower you in the slow games. Yep. When you wanted to go fast, I almost felt like I was faster than you. Yeah, on the draw, just because like yeah. how Knight just ramping. Yeah. yeah, I just felt like I overpowered you in those fast games. In the games where you had a more controlling game, I just felt like, like I did turn, it better than you. Turn three Knight into turn four Wingmate's just stupid. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you deal with that, I can turn five Dromoka you. It's yeah, based on the way that these games played out, like, I actually think that this deck should not be playing Hordling Outburst and should be playing Knight itself. Yep. Uh, no, I think Knight is a very good card. Yep. And I think Gideon and Wingmate Rock are just too good not to play together. Yeah. They just seem too good. Like, Knight, Gideon, Wingmate Rock, I just feel is, like, going to be this new thing mm-hmm. that every deck's just going to do. That's white, and it's powerful. I think you could put it into a bunch of different strategies. Yeah, it works like, in – Knight is really good. Like, Knight works well with, like, white, blue, or white, green. Mm-hmm. So you can do, like, Jeskai, or you can do, like, Abzan, or you could even do, like, Naya maybe. Or, like, yeah. there's just a variety of things you Esper can do. even. Yeah. Like, there's just th- – it's 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 going to see a lot of play. I think it's one of the most powerful early – uh, creatures besides hanger back and I never even cast one. I boarded out in this matchup, but like when I've been playing this deck with knight with hanger back, cause that's, it's so good to just go hanger back on two. They go play their third land. You, you knight and you get to pump your hanger back. Yeah. You get to do and both. it does. And you're accelerating. You're like, you're ramping, you're, you're progressing your board. Also, if you want to get the land off the knight and lose the tempo, you're still building your hanger back up. So you can just play it on the play take it up, don't play a land, and then next turn play a land and still, like, be able to take it up that turn and you just give your opponent the play, kind of, but you get the the, the land. So then you still untap with five lands and it's impossible to deal with the knight and the hanger back and into the wingmate rock. Yeah, like, if your hand has just a bunch of lands you can just curve out normally. Uh, if your hand, you know, maybe you don't even have that many lands in your hand but you still want to curve a five, knight, you can just skip a turn. Yeah, I, I have not changed a card in this main deck and this is, I've, I've played a lot with this deck so far without any change um, and I'm not saying that I need to change things or that I shouldn't or something, but it's just the fact that I want to start losing with the deck to make changes to figure out what I'm losing to, and I just haven't been. I mean, I think the one change that I would immediately make is just play four Wingmate Rocks. Yes, I only have three in it because I was scared of not playing because I feel like I didn't have enough early game, but Gideon has given me enough and Den Protectors and Wingmate and Knight. Like, and you can even cut, like, a Dromoka for one, too. Like, I mean, I, I know that yeah. Dromoka's great, but, like, Wingmate's just... Too so good not yeah, to. yeah, yeah, that that is true. Like wingmate, Gideon, uh, and I, I rarely do this, but I already bought. Uh, well, I actually went on to Star City after playtesting with Gideon for the first time, and there's only three in stock, and I just snapped up all the Gideons, and I just need to find one more. But like, I usually don't buy the the Planeswalkers right when they come out because it's like this Super is a ridiculous overpriced. price. But yeah. like Jace, I should have, and now with Gideon, I'm like. I'm going to do this because I feel like over 50% of everyone's going to be playing this card. Yeah, I was fortunate to buy Jace's immediately when they were not as expensive. I bought like, them at like 25. Yeah, I think I got mine. I think less than that, but yeah. like, uh, and then now it's like 50. So it was just, <laughs> I mean, if something's good, it's good, you and know. I think that's where Gideon's at, and I feel like Gideon is like it's when I when we're doing this video, it was is 30, and I don't know where it's at now. But after the open, I feel like it's going to be 50. I just feel like a bunch of people are going to top eight with it. It's going to dominate the format. Like, I didn't even realize, like, this is the first time I played this deck. I'm like, oh, yeah, I can just animate this and attack you and then rhino you. And you're, like, now completely against the back wall. Like, 
you you don't even have two turns to try to stabilize. You have to stabilize every turn. Yeah, I know. With an outpost siege, it's impossible to do that. So Gideon's ridiculous. Like, if you want to play, if you're if you're an Obzon fan, I like this list. This is a good starting point, uh, at least for preparation for this weekend. But um, yeah, get Gideon. It's just too good not to. Yep. It's just. <laughs> I, I don't feel like I'm going to be wrong about this. Yeah, and I already uh, I already bought a set of Knight of the White Orchids in preparation, so it turned out to be a probably wise investment. Exactly, yeah. I've so. got a set of Demonic Packs, too, and we'll see how that goes out this Friday <laughs> when I try to beat Todd with it. Ooh, yeah. that's spicy. So. Yeah. Uh, it's a Michael Majors Brew. He loves his Demonic Packs. Yeah, I mean, you know you, know you have a problem when majors is like first picking demonic pact in drafts because he's like oh man i just yeah i just know. have to do this yeah there's like only one other card in the entire set that can keep you from losing to, to it you fair, know? he's already won with jace and sphinx of tutelage and those are his three favorite cards from origin so he has to win with demonic pact before he like goes anywhere that's true you're yeah. right yeah but anyway guys thanks for watching join us this weekend where we're all going to be in indianapolis for the star city games standard open it's going to be the first tournament with battle for zendikar without theros block cedric phillips and patrick sullivan will be bringing you all the action uh, of, you know, me winning. Yeah, I'm just excited to be able to dust off my Coursers and, and carry Tids and get to just battle with those one more time, you know? And I'm looking forward <laughs> to BBD signing up with them, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, looking to, I'm looking forward to side events, so I'm going to be registering Courser and carry Tid and yeah. In, in, in the modern event? Yep. 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 Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We will see you later this week with some more Versus videos and articles. And hopefully we'll see you in Indianapolis where we're all going to be battling. Until later this week. See ya. Bye. Hey. Good night. God bless. Hey. Good evening. <laughs>